come back to grade gain where every student can make progress. We're going to be looking at another required practical today. This required practical is the current voltage characteristics for a non-ohmic conductor. Now, as always, the instructions are downloadable from my web shop, the URL appearing right here. Okay, so grab yourself a copy of those, settle down, and let's get on with the experiment. So, what we're going to need for our experiment is a power supply to start with. We're going to need an ammeter and a voltmeter. We're going to need a lamp. Now, this is a 12 volt lamp, not your standard 3.5 volt ones. This is a non ohmic conductor, so this is what we're going to be testing today. We're going to measure the voltage across it and the current through it. Now, the instructions specify you need one of these beauties, a rheostat or variable resistor. As you change the resistance here, it enables us to control the current through our circuit. Now, I'm not going to be using that today, and there's a reason for this. Because I've got one of these fancy power supplies, it has the rheostat already built in here. And that enables me to control the current and voltage that is being applied to my lamp or my non-ohmic conductor. So this dial here does the job of this. So the first thing to do is to set up the circuit as shown in the required practical instructions. Now you'll notice that my circuit has a battery and a rheostat. Remember I am replacing all of those with my power supply because it has the rheostat built in here. So, following my circuit round, remember I've got my power supply in replace of the cells and the rheostat. We connect from the power supply to the ammeter. From the ammeter To the lamp and from the lamp back to the power supply. Notice at the moment that I've left my voltmeter out of the circuit because I should have just a simple circuit with my power supply, ammeter and lamp. The ammeter needs to go in series, my voltmeter has to go in parallel so I connect that in parallel across the lamp. I have here a pre-prepared results table that will allow me to record the voltage and I'm going to go from negative 6 volts to positive 6 volts with a zero voltage reading. I will record the current and I will then calculate the resistance. Remember the voltage as it is in the first column is my independent variable. My current, the one that I am measuring, is the dependent variable. So here's my circuit set up. I'm going to start on minus 6 volts. Now, on my power supply it is set to 6 volts and my power supply tells me that I'm delivering 6.02 volts. Now you may not be lucky enough to have a power supply that actually provides the amount of voltage that it says it does. So it's really 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 important that you write down the voltage that is on the voltmeter and ignore any settings that are on the power supply. So here I can see that my voltage is minus 5.98 and I've got a current of minus 0.24. So now I change the voltage to minus 5 so I can see I've got minus 5.03 and minus 0.22. I'm then going to repeat all of these readings up to 6 volts. So as you can see I've reached the point on my results table where I'm about to do 0 voltage to take my zero voltage reading, I just turn the power supply off and I can see that I've got zero volts, which gives me zero current. Now, in order to get my positive 
voltage readings all I have to do is swap the connectors on my power supply over now if you watch the lamp you can see that on 6 volts it's very very bright and as I reduce the voltage the lamp gets dimmer until it goes out at 1 volt so having completed the experiment you can see there are my results from minus 5.98 up to plus 5.98 with our zero reading in the middle we're now going to plot a graph of current and resistance in order to plot our results we need a sharp pencil and a long ruler the first thing that we need to do is decide on a suitable scale so obviously my voltage being the independent variable goes on the x-axis and goes from minus 6 to plus 6 and my current on the y-axis goes from minus 0.25 to plus 0.25 so if we look at our graph paper if I start in the middle here minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6 fits beautifully so does plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then I can go up in 0.1s, 0.1, 0.2 and 0.3 so I draw in my axes and label it up not forgetting the labels and units and there we have our axes ready to plot so we can now plot the points so minus 5.98 is near enough minus 6 minus 0.24 remember we mark it with a nice neat x the centre of the x being the point on the line that we want to use we can now go through and plot the rest of the points now if we look at our graph we can see that we cannot put a straight line of best fit on these points so we have to fit a curve now this is an S curve starting here running through zero and ending over here this is the characteristic graph for a non ohmic filament lamp conductor if we look at the graph we can see that we have a curve this tells us that the resistance is constantly changing now the resistance changes as the voltage increases the resistance goes up because the temperature of the bulb also increases now using Ohm's law you can calculate the resistance for every stage of this experiment. And that concludes our required practical 4B, the resistance characteristics of a non-ohmic conductor. Remember, all the experiments are downloadable from my web shop. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and there will be more of these coming online as and when I get a chance to do them. Good luck with your GCSEs. So there we have it, the current voltage characteristics for a non-ohmic conductor, our lamp in this case. We get that lovely S-shaped curve. Remember that shape links us to a filament lamp rather than getting that straight line for our ohmic conductor. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel, Grade Gain. Check out some of the other videos that I've done. There's hints and tips, all sorts of wonderful stuff there. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your GCSEs.